Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool arcade game video for you today. Today we have something really special. As you can see, this is a Miss Pac-Man Galaga reunion arcade game. But this is a cabaret version, so it's not the full size one, it's the cabaret version. Um, these are the, the reunion games originally came out in 2000, which was uh, just before the 20th anniversary of Miss Pac-Man and Galaga, which both came out in 1981. And, uh, of course, it was made by Namco. And they made the full-size upright one that was just like the original Miss Pac-Man and Galaga upright cabinets. But they also, way back in the day, made Miss Pac-Man and Galaga uh, cabaret cabinets, they called them. Cabaret, of course, being like a bar. And they called them their cabaret versions because it was slightly smaller and it would fit in more locations. So it was intended for bars and things like that. So uh, they decided after they made the... Miss Pat Gallagher reunion game and it was so successful they decided you know what let's make the cabaret versions too and let's even make the cocktail versions so they even made the sit down cocktail cabinets but uh, this is the cabaret version intended for operation uh, out on location you can see it's got a coin door they also made some without a coin door for people's homes but it's just slightly smaller than the the uh, full size one um, it's about 62 inches tall which uh, the, the full size one I think is about 70 inches tall and it's uh, uh, 21 inches wide uh, whereas the full size ones are about 25 inches wide and it's 33 inches deep whereas the full size ones are about 36 inches deep. So just like they did on the full size one on one side it's got the beautiful Miss Pac-Man artwork that everybody knows and the doors uh, which is a big sticker basically. It's talking to us. And on the right side, it has the Galaga artwork that everybody knows and adores. People get real picky about their Galaga art, so we'll look real close at it. because uh, Now this is an official cabinet from Namco, and you can see that it's, uh, if we can get it to focus. Well, maybe it won't. can't get it to focus very well but you can see that it's actually uh, printed artwork this isn't screened I don't believe I think it's just printed um, so it's not real high quality even though it's official and uh, down at the bottom it has the copyright which everybody always is interested in and it says 1981 1982 2000 Namco limited all rights reserved so that's how they had it uh, on the re-release. Let's see if the Miss Pac-Man art works any nicer. Um, and I'm not sure if it's silk screened either. It kind of looks like it's printed as well. But that's how they did it. And on the front they did a kick panel artwork. They call it the kick panel because you kick the panel. Um, and half of it's Miss Pac-Man and half of it's Galaga. Now everybody has seen these, at least the full-size ones, because you know they released it 20 years after the original one, the original two, did so well. And then uh, it kind of introduced it to a whole new generation of people. I have worked for an operator back whenever these were still fairly new, and basically the way we set up uh, a location that we were going to put games in, like a bowling alley or a skating rink is, you started with, okay, we're definitely going to have a Miss Pac-Man Galaga, and then uh, let's see what else we can put in there. So this was in every location, pretty much. If you had a bowling alley, a skating rink, any kind of arcade, you had to have one of these. Uh, usually it was the upright one, though, but I mean the full-size one. But The cabarets were cool, too. Look at it. And it has this interesting feature where they had to, because of the size of the, uh, the, the way the monitors uh, set up, on the, on the original cabarets, they had a 13-inch monitor, so it was a lot smaller. Uh, so on these, they have a 19-inch monitor, uh, which is the same size as the original full-size games had, right? So the original Ms. Pac-Man had a 19-inch monitor just like this. The Reunion game with the bigger cabinet had a 25-inch monitor. But a lot of people didn't really like that. They kind of liked the 19-inch one better, just because they were more used to it. And whenever you blow the graphics up bigger it makes them look a little worse because they weren't really designed for that. So they designed this special cabinet where they could put a big 19-inch monitor in it, like the original ones had, bigger than the 13-inch monitor that the cabarets had. But the problem was if they had the marquee up here at the front, 
it would block some of the screen. So they had to recess the marquee back into the cabinet. And so you can see there's about a, oh, seven inch overhang. Um, and uh, I don't know if the camera will zoom in enough on that, but it the, the graphics aren't really sharp on that either. It's also not silk screened, I don't believe. I'm not an artwork expert, but you can see little uh, um, stippled lines where it looks like it was just printed like that. Namco 20 year reunion, Galaga class of 1981. And of course they put the suitable for all ages sticker over on the side because by this time uh, the newer games they were uh, putting violence ratings on them. So there you go. I'll turn it around. Oh, they also had a little strip on one side that had the Miss Pac-Man instructions and a strip on the other side that had the Galaga instructions. And it was kind of like they were meeting at their high school reunion was kind of the why they called it the reunion. And you can see everything is branded Namco now instead of Midway like they were on the original uh, games released in America at least. This control panel overlay has faded. Originally that would have been blue. It's kind of faded a green color. Um, which some of those do. That's a little hard to find though because it's uh, it has to have both Miss Pac-Man and Galaga and it's the reunion one and it's the cabaret version <laughs> so it's kinda uh, you might you might run into trouble to find a new artwork for that. I'll turn it around I'll show you what the inside looks like and then uh, I'll show you how to play Pac-Man on it as well. Alright so here are the labels on the back on the left you've got warning FBI federal law provides severe civil and criminal penalties for the unauthorized reproduction distribution or exhibition of copyrighted audiovisual works and video games the federal bureau of investigation investigates allegations of criminal copyright infringement and then you've got your fcc uh, notification and then check this out this is really interesting this is a namco sticker from san jose california pac-man galaga cabaret op right product name Miss Pac Galaga Cabaret Op. So I think the op means that it was meant to be operated, not for home edition. Blah blah blah. It says date of assembly January 2003, which is really late with coin door. So again, they could have made it without the coin door for home use. And then down here, UL model Miss Pac Gal Cabaret Coin. So January 2003 is actually really late for these. They, they first started making them in 2000 and the, the so-called reunion would have been 2001. So here we are, uh, you know, maybe not a full year, not, maybe not a full three years, but going into its third year that they were making, uh, still making these reunion cabinets. Because like I said, they put them everywhere. Pretty much every location had one of these. That was every location that was still operable. And the funny thing is, is that if you knew any operators or whatever, uh, most of them still had Miss Pac-Man and Galaga cabinets that they were still using from, from back in the day. So 20 years, a lot of them stayed out on location. So they were happy to see these come back out to where they could uh, buy new, reliable ones for their location. So this cabaret one is set up a little bit different inside than some of the, the uh, upright ones I've seen. Um, there's this little board down in the bottom uh, the game board you can barely see well maybe you can't the game board is down in there blinking at us and it's got a JAMA harness on it this is an official cabinet you know this is how it was released and then uh, there was this power supply on it so it says pack Galaga cab operator now uh, pack Galaga cabaret operator now, by the time, you know, this is 2018 that I'm filming this, so this thing's 15 years old. So that power supply is 15 years old. And it's some kind of special uh, linear power supply, which basically is one of these more common Peter Chow style power supplies. Um, this is one actually made by Hap. It's one of these decased. So basically this power supply, or one very similar to it, is down in there. And since it's kind of shoehorned in there we didn't want to leave it like that so we ran jumper wires and put a brand new power supply in it to run it so if they ever have any problem you know we didn't want to run it off the 15 year old power supply but it was still working um, but we put a brand new one in so that if they have any problem down the road they could it'd be much easier to update and then it's also got the monitor up here which i believe 
maybe a Vision Pro. Uh, not sure what kind of monitor that is. Um, not sure if that's the original monitor for this cabinet or not. But of course, it's a newer style monitor. It's a 19 inch and it's a CRT um, monitor as opposed to an LCD monitor. But in 2001, they didn't really have games yet, or 2003. They didn't really have any arcade games yet that had uh, CRT monitors in it. So I'll put the back door back on it. We'll turn it back around, and I'll show you the little trick about how they hid Pac-Man in the game if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, folks, so ironically, we had a customer bring us one of their little games that they wanted to uh, have us work on, the monitor a little bit. Uh, that's one of the ones without a coin door. So it's the same exact cabinet here. I'll show you the thing on the back. Namco, man, it will not focus very well. Namco Miss Pac Gal Cabaret, January 2003, without coin door. So there's your difference without coin door. And you can say this one is also made in January 2003. I wonder why it won't focus. Give me some focus here, people. Anyway, you get the point, all right? So it's the same exact thing, except it says without coin door, and it also says January 2003. And uh, the ones without a coin door, on the front sticker, it has a picture of a coin door. Look at that. Isn't that the most, uh, why would they do us like that? But it saved them a little money. So this is the exact same cabinet, exact same size. It's just they didn't cut the coin door out and install the coin door and all that stuff in it. Pretty wild. So uh, that's the other one. All right, folks, I'm going to show you a little trick you can do on these two. If you come up on one, this one's on free play, but if you come up on one in the arcade and you don't have a quarter in it or whatever, while it's running through the attract mode, you can crash the game. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to have my my brother Joe play it because I can't I don't have three hands okay so Joe whenever whenever the ship comes down and tries to grab you with the tractor beam it's not right here it'll be in the next little part whenever it comes down and tries to grab you with the tractor beam if you start wiggling the joystick and shooting him you'll take over control if you do it right whenever the so start wiggling it and shooting and stuff now whenever whenever you well on the next screen he'll come down and try to grab you so you're not controlling it, not controlling it, not controlling it. See, it says game over. All right, the computer's still controlling it. Okay, shoot, 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 shoot. Okay, now, now play the game. Don't die. <laughs> so he's actually controlling the game now. And if, oh, what did he do? He just crashed the game in a track mode. Crazy. I used to have these out on location, and basically kids would come and do that, right? And you see how it said stuck switch? Well, this is the, the 20th reunion, right? There's a 25th reunion. So the 25th reunion was in the Pac-Man cabinet. It was a yellow one. And you could pick all three games without the little cheat thing. You could pick all three games from the a track screen. Well, I would come in, I had them in all kinds of locations. I would come in and it would be stuck on that screen that said stuck switch and it was stuck all the time. Like you come in and like every week it was stuck on that screen. So we got a hold of the distributor, got a hold of Namco, everything else. And uh, they even went so far as to send us new game boards for all of the cabinets. So I had four out in four bowling alleys. So they sent me four brand new game boards. We swapped them in, sent the old ones back. It still still kept happening. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. But what was going on were kids were coming up and just wobbling the joystick and hitting the button. And if you do it at just the right time in the Galaga attract mode, you actually take over the game and can start playing it. So I'll show you what happens if you don't hit the buttons and stuff. But uh, on the they, they, they slightly changed the way the software worked. And on the 25th anniversary, what happened was the... Uh, Whenever that said stuck switch, it would stay on that screen. It wouldn't reset. So we'd come in and it'd be, it'd be on that, that screen. If you turn the game off and back on, it would fix it. 
but uh, we, it, we it was like pulling teeth trying to get the locations to just go reset the game if it was stuck. So we lost all kinds of money on those yellow cabinet ones. So see, normally in the track mode, it catches the ship. And they're just showing you that it's possible to do that. And then he comes down, and he gets the ship back, and it goes to double. And I believe that bugs on the original Galaga, too. I think you can do it on it as well. So there you go. Little uh, little bug hitting the game. All right, so there's one thing I want to show you on it. And, of course, everybody's, or most people have seen this. Whenever Namco released this, they did such a good job. It was basically a perfect version of Miss Pac-Man, just like the original. It was a perfect version of Galaga, just like the original. And the way you selected the two games was you had the start buttons for Miss Pac-Man on the left, and then you had extra start buttons for Galago on the right. And so on the wiring harness, it's not a perfect JAMA game because there's extra start buttons. So they they decided, I guess, while they were designing it, that they wanted to hide a little Easter egg in it for people. So they, they also made it where you could play the original Pac-Man on the game, which is you know just a very similar uh, to Miss Pac-Man game. So I guess it was very simple to put that little tiny ROM uh, in there and make it selectable. So the way you do it is on the game select screen, since we're on free play, I just hit start, which is like I put a quarter in. Um, and it'll say press one or two players start. So either on a free play game or if you just put your quarter in, whenever you get to this screen, you want to, it's, it's similar to the old Konami code. So you want to hit up, 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 down, 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 left, right, left, right, left, right? And watch what happens to the, the ghost. Wow! Did you hear that? So now, whenever you hit start, and you don't want to, don't do Galaga. Start Miss Pac-Man. It starts Pac-Man. Very cool. So that was kind of neat that they hid that in there for people, and then they they publicized it. So they put it on the flyer. Um, they told all of the uh, the game. Um, you know the companies that were doing you know home games and stuff and so the word got out there so everybody kind of knew that pac-man was hit on it so if you preferred pac-man to miss pac-man uh, you can play it i'm gonna show you one other thing so if you open the coin door on one of the reunions there's a little of course these are the coin mechs and everything just like a you know full-size arcade game there's a volume knob you know there's also a volume knob on that game board that I showed you, but you've also got a test uh, menu, right? So we'll check that out. So this is revision 1-03. I don't know how many there are, but you've got Miss Pac-Man adjustments, Galaga adjustments, general adjustments, show audits, switch tests, monitor alignment, factory defaults. So we'll go to general adjustments. So this is where you can change how much it costs to play. Now, this particular game had coin door things that say a dollar four times 25. So I think they wanted you to play a dollar a game, people, or pay a dollar a game. You've got free play that you can turn on and off. Uh, you had a continue mode, which wasn't on the original games. So Miss, you couldn't continue Miss Pac-Man and you couldn't continue Galaga back in the day. Uh, no bonus credits. Uh, set to default pricing. Clear the high scores. And then you could tell them if it was the upright or the cocktail version, right? So that's the general adjustments. So you also had Galaga adjustments. So you could turn off the attract sounds, but it does whenever it switches over to Galaga on the attract mode, it makes this explosion sound. You might've heard that a couple of times. You can change how many fighters you get per game, where you get your bonus. See? So we're going to do 20, 60, and then 60. So what that means is you get one at 20,000 points, and then you get one at 60,000 points, and then you get one at every 60,000 points past that. Rapid fire, on or off. So um, what that means is if you hold the button down, it'll just keep shooting. Or if you had to hit the button each time for a shot. And then shot speed, that's the famous... Uh, let me think if I've got this right. I think the rapid fire chip was the one that you had to add a ROM on the original game to make it do that, where you could just hold the button down. The shot speed speeds up how quick the shot gets off the screen. And why that's important is, is because you can only have two shots on the screen at one time. 
So if, it, if they go real slow, the game's harder because you can only shoot twice and then you have to wait for them to get off the screen before you can shoot again if you miss. Now, if you shoot and hit something, it, you can shoot immediately again. It does have a difficulty adjustment. Easy, normal, harder, hardest. We're going to put it on normal people. <laughs> and then miss Pac-Man adjustments, which uh, actually work exactly the same on Pac-Man as well. So miss Pac-Man per game. And then you can turn your speed to fast, right? So how many Miss Pac-Man you get per game, when you get your bonus Pac-Man, the difficulty, all you've got is normal or hard, speed of Miss Pac-Man, and exit. All right, so we'll see if it held our... All right, and we're moving, people. Now the, the reason the reason that they made the speed up chip back in the day to make this game this fast, you know, it was a it was a uh, kind of a hack to make the game this fast. The reason that they did it was so that the people that were really good players would get to a harder board quicker, so that they would lose quicker, so that they would make more quarters because if. You're, if you're so good that you can play through like 15 levels before it even gets hard for you, well, that, if it's slow, that means it's going to take you like 25 minutes or whatever to uh, to die, right, on a quarter. So they didn't like that. So they, they, they made a speed up chip. So it's crazy like this, so that you'll get to the, uh, the level that will cost you your quarter quicker. So it was really... People thought it was it was for the, the players, but really it was for the operators, so they'd make more money. Obviously, I'm not playing for points here, people. You can see at 10,000, we got our extra pack lady like we were supposed to. So there you go. That is Namco's 20th anniversary reunion cabinet, the special cabaret version, which is super cool if you ask me. These are awesome for a house because they don't take up as much room. Uh, they've still got the big 19-inch monitor. Some people might say this is better than the upright reunion one, which had the big 25-inch monitor because some people didn't like that. Um, just a very cool game. So we got this in and figured we would film a little video of it for you to make sure it was properly uh, documented here on YouTube. You know, a lot of our videos that we make, we just do it so that uh, down the road, whenever all these things have been... Uh, uh, sent off to the dump or wherever they end up at. We would film them from back whenever they were still up and running. And guess what? 2018, this one's still up and running. Now give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Leave your comments below. Tell us where you played this thing, which is probably all over the place. Have you seen the cabaret version? Have you seen that out on location? Probably. I'll bet they sold thousands. Uh, tell us where you've seen it, where you played it, what you thought of it. And uh, we will see you on the next video.